Sonoma Avenue. That's right. We want to say thank you again for joining us for another choir Bible study. Another day that we can praise and worship and glorify our Lord. Another day that we can call on the name of Jesus. Another day that we can lift up his name and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up and starting us on our way. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We just want to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. We want to lift it up today. As we continue to praise and worship our Lord and Savior, as we continue to study the Word of God, as we continue to uh, uh, show uh, that God that we love Him, but I want to let you know that God told me this morning. He said, "I love you," and I went, "Yes, Lord, I know." He said, "No, but I love you." And I go, "I know, Lord," but He said, "No, I love you." Then I had to think about what He was saying. He said. He loves me with an unconditional love. Uh, you don't even understand what I'm saying, but when God says he loves you, it's an unconditional love, and that you need to continue to stay with him, stick with him, call on him, and, uh, and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. So that's a blessing for you today, that God loves you. Tell somebody that God loves them. Amen? Amen. Woo! That's just a, just a great opening. I just want to say thank you all for joining. Um, i just like to get started with our uh, lesson today. We're going to start with a little short scripture. And then we're going to get into our lesson. Amen. God has just blessed us with another beautiful day. And we're going to go to Psalms 4. That's Psalms 4. Uh, the King James Version, but whatever version you have, read along. And it reads, hear me when I call, O God, in my righteousness, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in despair. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Salah. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call upon him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, Salah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up, thy, lift up the light of thy countenance upon me. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the in the time that their corn and their wine increase, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only maketh me dwell in safety. Amen. And that is Psalms 4. Blessed to the hearing and reading of most holy word. Let us pray. Lord for God, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and Father, our glory, I just want to say thank you, Lord. You're blessing me again, Lord. As I slow my mind down, Father God, to focus on you, I just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, with another day. Father God, we ask you to bless our pastor, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you continue to uh, shine your light on him, Lord. Uh, continue to keep your head of protection around him and his family, Lord, as you continue to build him up in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you be with Sister Maria and her family, Lord, as you continue to show her the way, and God, let her know that you are the way and that she is loved by you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you brought her a mighty long way, and you haven't left her nor forsaken her. So continue to just bless her, Lord, as only you can. Father, we lift up Brother Jim to you and ask you to be with him, Father God, uh, because you've given him a portion of health. We ask, Lord, that you continue to be with all our choir members, Father God, uh, Lord, and just continue to strengthen them that want to sing Zion songs with you, that want to uh, sing uh, um, hymns and songs to you, Father God. Yes, Lord, if they continue to lift up the name of Jesus, telling somebody through their song, oh God, how great thou art. Yes, Lord, you are great and great to be praised. And so, Father God, we ask, oh God, that you continue to be with them. Be with uh, Reverend Francis, Lord. And continue to strengthen him, build him up where he's going down, Lord, and continue to travel with him, oh Lord, as he continues to embark upon the work that you have him to do. Father God, we ask this in Jesus' name, Lord, that you continue to be with me and my family, Lord. And Lord, just continue to just uh, walk with us, talk with us, Lord, as you 
rock us to sleep and wake us up, Father God, on in our beds, Lord. We just want to say thank you for what you're doing right now. Father God, we ask you to be with all community Baptist our members and all churches that are opening up in your name. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sin, and they be many, Lord. And we know that you will, because you are a gracious and faithful God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. And so as we get into our lesson tonight, it is coming from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 31. So I hope you got your Hebrew tongue together because we're going to all read this together. Amen? Amen. Okay. And I have the King James version, but whatever version you have, read along with us. Amen? Amen. And let's read mine. And so, yet breathing out, threatening and slaughter, threatening and slaughter against the disciple of the Lord went unto the high priest and desire of him letters to Damascus. To the synagogue, that if he found any of his of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from him. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecute, persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. <clears throat> and the men which journeyed with him, Stood speechless, hearing voices, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, one of, for one called Saul, Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done by saints at Jerusalem. And there he has, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in a way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul, then was Saul certain day with the disciples which were in Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, uh, proving that this is very Christ, that this is very Christ. 
And after many days were full, fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But there lay in a wait uh, was known of Saul, and they watched the gate day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he had saved to join himself to the disciples. But they were afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken unto him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus uh, in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecian. But they went about to slay him. Which men, excuse me, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to talk. Then had the churches rest, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost um, were multiplied. Amen. Thank God, thank God. Blessed to the hearing and reading of his word. Let's get into this lesson here. The key verse to this is Acts chapter 9, 15, verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, uh, kings, and the children of Israel. And let us read. God knows exactly uh, when a person is to open. Oh, gosh. Is open to receiving the gospel message. Thank you. Most of us are familiar with the artwork that shows Jesus at the door of a cottage knocking. A closer look at the painting reveals that there is no door, no door handle on the outside where Jesus is standing. It is our responsibility to open a door uh, from the inside once we hear his knock at the door of our heart. The Apostle Paul studied under one of the greatest theologians of his time. Yet all he learned was based on tradition and the law of Moses. Saul, which uh, changed his name to Paul, was completely unaware of God's plan to save mankind by grace and not by works. Up until his Damascus Road experience, Paul had not heard the gospel message with his heart. Alongside the Roman uh, roadway, Paul came in contact with the risen Lord and gave his life to the Savior. Jesus called to each of us, uh, but he will not press us. Many think they can wait until another time to receive Jesus as the Savior, but only God knows if we will be given another opportunity. While God, while God loves all men and women, he places a precious stipulation on who will be with him. Only those who profess Jesus Christ as their Savior will stand before his throne in eternity. And just think, God has given you a great opportunity to guide others to receive him, receive him, uh, to receive him and receive eternal life. And all together at the bottom, thank you for the opportunity to guide others to receive you. Amen. And this lesson is the greatest opportunity. This lesson is the greatest opportunity. So let's gleam over it and let's see what God has put on our hearts and what we can get from this. Amen. As we can see here, uh, this whole lesson is rooted in the conversion of Paul. Um, it lets us know in the very for, uh, first part of this uh, lesson here in Acts 9 and 1 through 31 that Paul uh, crucified, not crucified, but brought others of the way to the chief priest to be crucified, to be killed, murdered, uh, bound. And he didn't care who it was, men, women, children. He just took them and he bound them and he took them uh, to the chief priest, the high priest at the time. And they were executed. Uh, so here's Paul one day going wanting a letter to go to Damascus because he's heard that there were more of the way 
And that's what they call them before they call them Christian, they call them of the way, uh, that they was more of them in Damascus. And he wanted to go there and get them because, you know, hey, if I bring more here, you know, that's just another big showing of the, uh, to, the to, to the high priest, uh, how much I'm growing in the traditions of the law of Moses, uh, because he didn't understand. And so, you know, Paul was riding on his mule, they said, or uh, donkey or whatever he was riding, beast in some books. He was riding on his uh, horse. And it, it said in verse 4, of chapter 9, verse 4, that he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And when he, that happened, a light shined around him uh, from heaven. And so, Paul was not on his butt. He didn't know what he was reading, but he he, he knew because he, he he said, "Who art thou, O Lord?" And God, when God asked him, "Who is it? Why did you persecute me?" And so the, the Lord told him, "I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted, and it is hard for thee to kick against the prick." How much longer are you going to kick against the prick? How much longer? Are you going to continue to reject God, the word of God, and all that he has for you? He's promised you eternal life, and he doesn't want to see you go to that place of damnation. And yet you are kicking against the prick, those who have been who have received Christ and those who don't want to know anything about it. But, you know, your day is coming, if it hasn't already come. Um, because God knows when we first breathe and he knows when we're going to take our last breath. So we need to be out telling people about Jesus. And so here's Paul here, uh, who's been blinded along the way, Jesus, so I'm going to show you, you know, uh, the things that you must suffer. I don't want you to forget that. Here Paul has been blinded by this gospel of Jesus Christ. He's been blinded by the, the Lord himself. And for three days, he didn't eat. Um, as he, you know, uh, God sent Ananias uh, to, to, uh, to remove, uh, to remove, <laughs> to remove the scales from outside. Thank you, Lord. That, that mule was coming out. My Lord, I just got to say it. Now that I've said it twice. And, but it was to remove the scales from Paul's eyes. And Paul, uh, still Saul, uh, was able to regain his sight. And Ananias uh, blessed him. And Ananias told him, the Lord has said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. He was talking to Ananias uh, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the king and the children of Israel. And I, for I will show him how much, how, not how much, but how great things he must suffer for thy name's sake. And there's a little suffering when you do the work of God. And that's what Paul had to understand. And that's what God had to show him. And he was going to do the work of the Lord because the Lord had spoken to him. And so Saul, when he did what God said, it says in verse 17 of chapter 9, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hand on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thy canest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then verse 18 said, and immediately, remember that, immediately, there fell from his eyes the scale. The scales had been, uh, the eyes and the scales had came off, and he received his sight and arose and was baptized. And the knife baptized. And he received me and he was strengthened. And he was there for a few days. And then Saul, after that, uh, went out and started preaching in the synagogue. Uh, that this uh that he is the son of god who is he he preached christ in the synagogue that uh he is the son of god 
and they were amazed. But you know, this is coming from Paul, a man who was coming to uh, bound him, a man who was coming to arrest them all, uh, coming from him, uh, God was using him in a mighty way. It says here in the lesson, it is our responsibility. I like this when it says, when we look at the paintings, uh, sometimes I'm not sure we all see them when you see Jesus standing there knocking at the door of your heart, that we have to open that door. In Revelation uh, 3 and 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him. I will sup with him and he with me. And he with me. And so that's Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And so we need to understand that Jesus is standing there knocking at the door of our heart. Look how long it took us, a lot of us, to come to Christ. And all that time, God was knocking at the door of our heart. All that time, he was keeping a hedge of protection. All that time he was extending his hands to us. All that time he was showing us his love. All that time, through all the ups and downs, through all the turnarounds that we were putting ourselves through, God was still knocking at the door of our heart. And he could have easily entered in, but he didn't because he's waiting for us to turn that door knock, that open up and ask him to come in. And so that's what we need to understand. He says, it is our responsibility here in that first paragraph to open the door from inside once we hear his knock on the door of our hearts. And that's what it, that's what it takes. You may not be the one that, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, tell some, uh, 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 bring someone to Christ. You might be that one that waters and someone else is another that plants. You know, but God gets the increase as it says in First Corinthians uh, chapter three, verses uh, six. Uh, I have planted Apollo's waters, but God gave the increase. God is the one that gets the increase. We are to go out and share the good news of Jesus Christ. It says here that the Apostle Paul studied under some of the greatest theologians of his time. And his name was Gabriel, I think it was. Uh, I can't think of it. I think that's how you pronounce it. And yet all he learned was based on the tradition of the law of Moses. And so that's what a lot of people do. They're, they're, they're locked up in tradition. And, 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 and Paul found that all to be done. Even though he, he, he was zealous to be a Pharisee, he was zealous to be a part of the Jewish uh, synagogue group. He found it all to be done. And Paul was completely unaware of God's plan to save uh, mankind by God's grace and not by works. Because we always think that it's what we do, but it's already been done by God's grace. We just, when he was on the cross, uh, God has already made the way. We got to accept that way. And so we need to understand that um, uh, it was by God's grace and not by works of, of us. Um, if it says in Ephesians, in Ephesians, my Lord, I don't know what I'm thinking of it. In Ephesians uh, uh, 2 and 8, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. And then verse 9, not of works as any man should boast. Uh, we, we don't have no reason to boast. If you're going to boast, boast of what God has done for you. Boast of what God is doing in you, through you, and around you. That's the boasting you need to be doing. That's what you need to be telling people about how great God is. Um, and so here is Paul being converted, but now he's he's a wanted man now. You know, things have changed. He went there with a warrant, and guess what? That warrant's been turned to his name. His name is on the list. And so he couldn't even leave that city that he was in at the master. He had to be lowered in a basket because they heard of him teaching in the synagogue. And so that demonstration he, he made, he was making, uh, he had to be lowered in a basket so he could get out of the city because God had a plan for him. 
and God gave him a way to escape. And so we need to understand that. Paul had not heard the gospel message with his heart. Paul had just heard the gospel message with his ears. It's when you open your heart up, when you open that door to your heart to allow that message to get in. Because God changes you from the inside out. And so you got to understand while people are looking, well, I don't feel that. That's because you're not understanding what God did. He's working on you from the inside. It'll show through the cracks in you because we're all broken vessels. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so we need to understand that we are all in the same boat. And we need to uh, thank God for never giving up on us. It says here in the third paragraph, it says, alongside the roadway, Alongside the Roman roadway, Paul came in contact, <laughs> in contact with the risen Lord and gave his life to the Savior. Lord, this devil is trying to just screw up my word tonight. And I thank Jesus for just letting me understand that I need to just continue to just press forward. Um, and so, as it said here again, I'm going to read that again. Along Side the Roman roadway, Paul came into contact with the risen Lord and gave his life uh, to the Savior. Jesus calls us uh, to calls to each of us, but He will not press us, and that's that's the beauty of it all. God is still giving us that freedom to choose Him, um, and we need to understand that we need to continue to choose God. He says He will not press us. He's not going to pressure you, pressure you to do this because it's written on your heart. We know what we need to do, but we're so stubborn. We're so stiff necked We're so, ugh, so messed up that we get caught up in this world thinking everything is going to last forever, but it's not. Only thing that is eternal is God and his word and the, uh, uh, the people, you know? And so we've got to understand that we have a God that is internal. It says here that uh, many think that they can wait until another time to receive Jesus as their Savior. But only God knows if we will be given another opportunity. Don't miss that. Only God knows. I told you, God knows when you take your first breath, and he knows when you're going to take your last breath. So you can't say, I'll wait till tomorrow, or I'll wait till after the service, or I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. You keep pushing off the inevitable. And then you get sick in a hospital and you get to a coma. You think you ain't going to have time to ask God at that time. It's going to be a little bit late. So you need to accept God in your life right now because you don't know when your last time, uh, breath is. But God knows. God knows when you're going to take your last breath. And so we need to be about um, telling others about Jesus Christ as Paul was it was placed upon him to do the same thing. Um, and here it says here, why God loves all men and women, he places a serious stipulation, a very serious stipulation on who will be with him in heaven. In John 3, 16, it says what? For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son for us all. So God wants everybody to be in heaven, but God knows everybody ain't going to choose that way. You know? That's why I love it when I read uh, in uh, where, where at? Um, Deuteronomy 30 uh, 30 and 19 and he says 19, yeah, 30 and 19. He says, I, Deuteronomy 30, 19, I have called heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you, get this now, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Look at God gave you the answer. He says, look, I place this before you. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this. Meaning it's been recorded here on earth and in heaven. 
and that we need to uh, uh, choose life. He says, I have set before you life and death. It's right before you. Choose one. And a lot of people, are, as I passed all this, are in a hurry to get to hell. You're choosing death. And, and that's not what God has put there. He says, no, I did not tell you to choose death. I told you, therefore, to choose life. And that both you and your seed may live. And that's live forever with God. That's the greatest opportunity that you have. That to live in eternity uh, with God. One of the greatest opportunities. The most important opportunity you have. He says, only those who profess Jesus Christ as their Savior will stand before his throne in eternity. Only those. Um, and we should understand that it's God who has made a way for us. Let's see. I read, uh, and that's 1 Corinthians 9. Let's see. 17, I thought it was. He says, for if I do these, this thing willingly, I have reward, a reward. But if it's against my will, the dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. That's telling somebody about Jesus. Now I gotta get there. He says, and just think of this, back in the lesson, and just think of this. God has given you a great opportunity to guide others who receive him and receive eternal life. So if you don't know what God wants you to do, that sums it up right there. In Acts 1 and 8, God says, I want you to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. Amen? He says, I want you to go out um, through all, wherever your surroundings are. And um, he says, but you shall receive power in Acts 1 and 8. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Meaning we need to go out and tell people about Jesus. He says, you have a great opportunity to tell somebody. To tell somebody about Jesus. Don't you know how great that is? That's what Paul was saying here. He said, for though, in verse 19, uh, verse 9, chapter 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory. Uh, for the necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He says, I got to tell somebody, anybody and everybody about the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what John the Baptist was doing, preparing the way and telling people about the one who is to come, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. He came, he died, and he rose again, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, um, and so we need to understand that we need to continue to, uh, to, to, to help people, anybody, everybody. You've been given an opportunity. If you don't know what God wants you to do, guess what? It's to tell somebody, a loved one, that God loves them, that he loves them with an unconditional love, that we need to come to him and be a part of his kingdom, that we need to come to him and be born again. Yes, to be born of the spirit. Um, and we all need to be born again, or all of those who have been born again. I'm so glad that God extended his hands to me and never uh, left me, you know, forsake me that he continued. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23, uh, let's go 22. Seeing you have purified your soul and obeyed the truth through the spirit unto unclean love of the brother, see that ye love one another with a pure heart uh, fervently. Being born again, not of corrupted seed, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. And then verse 24, for all flesh is as Christ, and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withered and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of God, 
the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We have to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. We have to tell people that uh, God loves them. And we have to tell people that they need to be saved. We have to tell people that there is a place, uh, hell, that's waiting for them if they don't come to Christ. We need to tell them that there's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, you can only get to the Father through him. And that's in uh, John 14 uh, and 6. <coughs> because he see uh, uh, when Thomas said, make that John 14, 5 and 6, when Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, but how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so we need to tell people that uh, Jesus uh, is giving, up, giving them an opportunity. As he's given us an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You have the greatest opportunity in the world. I don't care what opportunity man has placed above you, God has placed a higher value on telling somebody about uh, him and his salvation for us all. His love, that free gift. Thank you, Lord. His grace and his mercy uh, that endures forever. His grace and his love for us. That he's allowing us to be a part. That he's given us life and life more abundant. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Abundant life that they're not living. And not, none of us are living until you come to Christ. But you must be born again. As he told uh, Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus, uh, you must be born again. Not born of a, a, a water, but born of the blood, you know, and born of the spirit. You must be born again. And so that's how we all come to Christ. We must open that door and let him in. Because he told, um, God told Cain, Cain, Satan is knocking at your door. He lies at your door. And so you can either open your door to Satan that is lying there waiting for you, I'm telling you. But God has said, no, open the door and let him in. Um, and so we need to understand that we do have a God that loves us. We do have a God that cares for us, and he's given us all a great opportunity to uh, be a part of the ministry that he has for us all. And so you don't never think that God don't have anything for you to do. You're to tell somebody. You have the greatest opportunity to tell somebody when they're feeling down, tell somebody when they're feeling confused, tell somebody when they're being burdened and the mood, tell somebody when they're being weary, tell somebody when they're carrying a heavy yoke, tell somebody about the greatest opportunity you have, how God brought you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. And I'm Reverend Parker saying, I want to thank you all for being here for this lesson. This is a great lesson. There's more to it. Um, but it, the greatest opportunity you have is to tell somebody about the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and who rose for us all. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway because of the love, that unconditional love. Like I told you earlier, Jesus loves you with that unconditional love. And so we have to be that, uh, that, that, that person. You have to be that person. And that person may not get it the first time. Uh, you may have to tell them several times. And they'll get tired of hearing it until they realize that you are on a stick with God. You're that testimony. You're that walking with this, who God has appointed you and anointed you. Uh, the greatest opportunity there is. And so just continue to just uh, pray for others, pray for your loved ones, and just continue to just uh, pray for the world the people of the world, uh, that they come to know and come to uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, once I thank you again for that opportunity to allow us to thank the Lord. And you showed us, Lord, how you used Paul, who persecuted 
the people of the way during that time, Lord, that you choose this heart and we understood, Lord, that um, by your grace, and not by works, Lord God, but grace and your salvation and your faith in you, Lord, that um, when we come to you, Lord, that you will never leave us not to say that you have an opportunity for us all uh, to tell somebody about how good you are. Lord, we're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful that your word has a God. And it's lived through this generation, Lord. Let it keep on good. We know that it'll be for that. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I hope to see you again. And if God willing, we'll see you again with another fire by the study. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.